Abby! Where on earth are you? I got a call from your mom right now. She says she's been looking everywhere for you. Abby! A! B! B! Why? What do you want? Quit ringing up my phone. It's way too early to deal with you. We're done. So I need you to quit acting as if you're my boyfriend or caretaker or whatever. This needs to stop. To be completely honest with you, I hadn't even thought about you since the day you decided to cheat on me. I'm only reaching out to you because today is the day that we scheduled for the meeting about our divorce. Our lawyers are arriving at 10 o'clock. I told you that the two of us needed to be here an hour early to finish all the paperwork. Why are you still not here? Cut me some slack. We don't need a full hour to finish that. I'm really getting tired of your games. We rescheduled this meeting once already because you said that today would be a better day. I'm spending New Year's Eve doing all of this instead of seeing my family because you said you wanted to finish everything before New Year's. Just come as soon as you can. Let's get this over with already. Actually, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I've decided to spend the day with Russell. So, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to reschedule this meeting again. You gotta be kidding me. What the hell do you mean? I mean, I'm gonna spend today and the beginning of the year with Russell, so I can't come to today's meeting. Cancel whatever plans and come here right now. We're already on our way to the airport, so... Well, come back then! We can't! We're already on the highway. Oops. <laughs> I told him that I wanted to spend New Year's Eve at the beach, and he got the tickets right away. <laughs> Isn't he amazing? And he booked a hotel suite for us, so I'm probably spending the best New Year's of my life there. People who have money really are just different, aren't they? I can't believe how blind I was to marry you in the first place. Whatever. Just finish the paperwork on your own and get the divorce over with. Thanks! You can't just leave everything to me. We need to discuss the terms of the divorce. You'll end up regretting it if you leave it all to me. I'll be seeing you next year! I'm so done with you. You shouldn't even be riding an airplane anyways. Your baby is due this month. Just go home and keep the baby safe. It's fine. The due date isn't until three weeks later, and I'll be back home by then. Besides, the baby daddy's gonna be right beside us for the whole trip. I'm sure he'll take care of me if anything happens. I feel like you're underestimating the amount of danger and complexity that comes with giving birth. Have you never heard of stories of mothers giving birth on airplanes and getting themselves into life or death situations? acting like you're some kind of expert or something? You know nothing about birth, nor do you know how it feels to be pregnant, since you're a man. I know my body, and I'm saying I'm fine. Well, I know that certain conditions of the mother can mess with the due dates of babies. For example, being extremely tired after traveling long distances right before giving birth. Whatever. This baby in my tummy isn't even yours anyway. You don't have the right or responsibility to be worrying about this. Are you still into me or something? Too bad I'm stuck with a rich guy now. <laughs> Sucks to be you. <laughs> I'm worried about the baby because no matter how horrible the parents are, the baby is always innocent, and they don't deserve to be put in danger because of their parents' ego. You're definitely still into me, aren't you? How on earth did the conversation that we just had lead to that conclusion? <sighs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. I belong to Russell now, so you don't have any say in anything I do. Got it. Whatever. But even if you end up regretting your own actions, I'm not gonna help you out. <sighs> sure. Just give me a date where you can come and discuss the terms of the divorce. A day that you can come for sure. Yeah, yeah, let me check right now. Ugh, I get home from the trip on the 2nd of January, so I can show up for any date after that. I'll try contacting our lawyers to see if we can reschedule it on that day. Wait here. Hurry up! 
exactly at noon on the 3rd of January. And this is final. We'll meet up at your house so that you won't have a chance of standing us up anymore. Just stay in bed until the time comes. And don't even think about rescheduling this time. I have the divorce permit that you signed when you left with Russell. So I'll sign my part and turn it in today. Sounds good? Sure, just hurry up and get it over with. We're pulling up to the parking lot of the airport right now, so I'll leave the rest to you, but bye! I just hope nothing happens to the baby. Hey, Ken. It turns out that I can't do the meeting on the 3rd early. You're so sorry. Reschedule it again. Thank you. You have to be joking right now. It's only been a day since we agreed on that day! You know, it's not just me that you're creating trouble for by selfishly rescheduling our meetings like this. Our lawyers and everyone else involved are reserving precious time out of their day to help us out. How could you disregard all of that just for your personal needs? Calm down. I actually have a proper reason this time. What could possibly be more important than this meeting? Well, the thing is, you know how my due date was pretty close, right? I mean, yeah, we just went over that yesterday. So I ended up giving birth to my baby earlier than expected, which was yesterday. I hate when people say this, but... I TOLD YOU SO FOR GOD'S SAKE! Did you at least make it through the airplane ride? Duh, of course you did. And like I told you yesterday, I can tell what's happening to my own body. You wouldn't have gone on that trip in the first place if you did. Oh, shut up! My water broke right when we checked into our hotel room. So my darling Russell called the ambulance for me, and I was sent to the nearest emergency hospital. I ended up giving birth right then and there. Once again, I TOLD YOU SO! Your mom contacted me yesterday to apologize about your selfish behavior. And she told me how you traveled all the way to the beach resort on the coast side. Is it a common sense that a pregnant lady shouldn't travel long distances? Could you please just stop sticking your nose into my business? I'm not your wife anymore, and you're nothing to me either. The baby isn't even yours, so don't try and act like it's guardian or something. We're nothing to each other, so stop acting like we are. I was wrong for thinking you could possibly take this seriously. Whatever. Well, when are you coming back then? Let's see. I just gave birth yesterday, so you couldn't possibly expect me to come back tomorrow as planned, can you? Unlike you, I'm a reasonable person, so no. Just tell me when you're coming back. Can't you just finish the whole procedure without me? Seriously? You made us wait all this time, and now you want us to do everything by ourselves? I need some alone time with my baby. You should be more understanding about my situation. Right now is the time for us to take in the joy and excitement of being blessed with the new life that has entered me and Russell's lives. I shouldn't be needing to tell you these things for you to notice. You're clearly the one who should be the gentleman here and back down. This is why guys like you get cheated on by amazing women like me. Fine. But this means we'll be making all the decisions about the conditions of the divorce without you. Are you sure about this? Yeah, yeah, just get it over with. I'll be hearing about the results from my parents afterwards, so make sure to never contact me again. It makes me sad seeing you in such a miserable state after I left you. Thank God I won't have to see your face ever again. Oh, and by the way, I was planning on asking you for one last favor. What do you want? I need you to leave the house we are living in. Why would you want me to do that? That house is in my dad's name. It only makes sense that you leave since we already got divorced. Me and my new family will be moving in and building our bright and amazing future there. I don't need a loser like you to be getting in the way of that, so please be my guest and leave the house. I've already moved out long before. Why would I want to stay in a house that reminds me of the horrible things you did to me? All the furniture is gone and no one lives there anymore. Oh great! 
I'm glad you did something right for once. Well then, I'm starting to get sleepy. The effort it takes to be a mom, am I right? <laughs> Good night! To see you never again! Mrs. Fletcher, it's me, Ken. Happy New Year's! I mean, I'm not sure whether it's a happy time in my life right now, but... I'm trying my best to stay strong through this. Good evening, Ken. I'm so sorry about my granddaughter making you go through all of this. Did she make a call about the news to you? About her baby? I received a text from her. That she gave birth at the vacation site. I heard about it just last night. Oh, I cannot believe that girl. How irresponsible could a person possibly be? She's my own daughter, but this was a seriously dangerous action by her, towards herself and the baby. I even told her multiple times to come back because it was too close to her due date, but she just wouldn't listen. And as we all expected, this was the result. It isn't just her, but also that Russell boy. He should have been there to stop her from putting his baby in danger. Tell me about it. I really just hope that everyone stays safe. By the way, Mrs. Fletcher, would you possibly be going to the hospital that Abby is staying at right now? Yes, yeah, she told us that she and her boyfriend have decided to stay here for a while before returning, so my husband and I are on our way. Even though she's the way she is, Abby is still our daughter. So we need to do whatever is best for her, and most importantly, the baby. If that's the case, I was wondering if I could ask for a favor from you. Could you please give it a hear? Of course, honey. What could it be? The truth is, I have doubts about whose child the baby is. So I was wondering if you could please help me get a DNA sample of the baby to turn it in and check who the real father is. Why would you have doubts about who the father is? Abby's been saying that the biological father of the baby is Russell. But it seems that she hasn't properly checked whether that was true or not. And to be honest, I still haven't given up completely about the baby being my child. And if it is my child, then I can say without a doubt that I could give her my everything to make her the happiest they could be. On the other hand, I'm not sure whether a couple like Abby and Russell could protect the baby, nor set an example of what kind of adult they should aspire to be. I understand what you mean. Thank you for understanding. Could I please ask you to do this? For both me and the baby? This information is necessary for me to even have a chance of obtaining legal rights as a parent of the baby. So you'll be going against each other in court over the parenting rights? Yes. I've been trying to make this happen, but Abby's been avoiding my confrontation through this way and that. I need your help to make this happen. Please. I know it'll be a hassle to do this, but you're the only person who I can ask for help from. If this is for a better future for the baby, then I'll do it. Thank you so much. I'll be forever in your debt. Ken? What the hell is going on? What did you do? I need you to reply right now. I know you're part of this. What do you want now? Why are the lawyers telling me that my daughter is your biological child? It's literally impossible that this is happening. Oh, you're talking about the results of the DNA test that you received today. Yeah, I saw it too. I was hoping so, but didn't expect her to actually be my daughter. Thank God! This is physically impossible, and you know it. You cheated, didn't you? You paid the company to switch up the results. I know you did. I made sure to ask a reliable company to carry out the test. There's no way that I could have changed the results to my advantage. I don't care. You've probably somehow found a way to get around it. If you can't believe the results, then you can just have it checked on your side again. No matter how many times you try, the results aren't going to change. There's no reason to test this again. You and I both know this isn't our baby. Why are you so confident about that? You know why. 
We haven't done anything like that with each other for at least the past year. It just doesn't add up! Ah, I guess you really don't remember about that night. What night? The night you came back home blacked out drunk. As soon as you got home, you came all over me. I was surprised that you hadn't tried to do anything with me in a while. But I guess you really were too drunk to even remember. Me? With a guy like you? I've despised you for the longest time. There's no way that could have happened. I did the math. The day that happened just adds up with the day you gave birth to our daughter. That's why I asked your parents to help me get a DNA sample of the baby. And it turns out that my doubts were in fact true. You brought my parents into this? I can't believe they do something like this to me! Judging by the way you cheated on me in the first place, and even went as far as to put your baby in danger to fill your own pleasure, I'm pretty sure you'd understand why they made that decision. They betrayed their own daughter! Whatever. This is all the proof I need. Since that child is biologically related to me, I have the legal right to fight for the rights as her parent. Russell gave me the happiness that you never gave me. We could have had a happy family together, but you always ruin everything. I mean, you still get that douchebag. So you haven't lost everything. Russell left me yesterday. All because you couldn't keep quiet about that one night. He got angry that I almost tricked him into raising your baby. That's on you for not checking earlier on. You might have been able to avoid losing him if you hadn't waited to tell him until after the baby was born. I pity him for getting stuck with an irresponsible cheater like you. You shut up! He probably feels betrayed. Being told that he's the father of a baby and finding out that she's actually the child of another man. Probably feels almost as if he was cheated on. <laughs> I guess God's decided that you're not fit for happiness. Sorry. How could you say something like that? Now that I have proof, I'll be seeing you in court. I'll fight with my life for the parenting rights of my daughter. I can't leave my precious baby with a delinquent like you. You're trying to take her away from me too? You can't! I can. I'm her biological father. And you probably can't even provide for her anyways. Don't worry. I'll be sure to make her the happiest girl in the world. I'll never hand her over. The mother wins in most cases like this. You have no chance at winning. It's statistically proven. Come on, Abby. Just think about it. You broke up with the guy you cheated on me with, who you were financially reliant on. So you're too broke to raise a child. And both of your parents agree that it would be better off for the child for me to raise her. They're so committed in supporting me that they're saying that they'll cut connections with you after we settle this case. What? Besides, the only reason that mothers win more often than fathers is because they usually have a better facilitated environment to raise a child. You have practically no income right now and you have no support from your parents or another man. On the other hand, my workplace is super supportive towards parents, and there's even a company-run preschool in the building. On top of that, I work from home on most days, so I have the environment to take good care of her. But she needs her mother's love! You've proven to be insufficient in providing love to others. My parents, your parents, and my sister are all saying they'll support me through this. Think of the happiness of the child. Let go of your ego, Abby. Ken! What? Don't you think the best choice to make for us is to get back together? <laughs> Very funny. You're joking, right? I'm dead serious. The environment for raising a child that you just told me about sounds amazing. The only missing piece is me, her mother. With that environment and the love by her mother, we'll be able to raise her in an environment that most parents could only dream of. So I say we get back together. Nah. What? 
Do you really think I could leave my princess with an irresponsible, unreasonable, crazy lady like you? Oh, hell no! Nah. Having no mother is better than having a mother like you. I can't believe you! You'll be hearing from me through my lawyer from now on. Wait! Farewell, Abby. First things first, I was able to obtain legal rights as the parent of my daughter, as expected. Russell, the man that my ex-wife cheated on me with, paid his part in the compensations and disappeared like thin air. My ex-wife tried to go back to the house that we used to live together in after court, but her father had already sold the house since it was in his name and no one lives there now. The money that was earned by selling the house was given to me as compensation and education fees. But in exchange for paying for these fees instead of their daughter, Abby's parents banned her from entering their household forever. All because she decided to cheat on me. Abby lost her parents, her daughter, her house, and even the man she cheated on me with. I heard that she was crying in front of her old house for a few hours, but our neighbors called the police on her for being suspicious, and she was forced to walk away. After that, a friend of mine told me that he had seen her get onto a bus headed for the subway station, and no one has seen her ever since. Molly, I've got big news. We're going to be pregnancy buddies. Really? Congratulations, Pearl. I'm sure childbirth and raising children will be a challenge, but let's help each other. Yeah. I'm glad I have someone I can rely on so close by. I want to give my child the best environment and education possible. So I'm doing lots of research on that. I'll share what I find with you, Molly. Thanks. You're amazing, Pearl. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. I think I'll just have my hands full with the birth, lol. <laughs> Me too. The first part is making sure they're born healthy. She was just born. She ended up coming four days before the due date. It looks like the baby has a pretty relaxed personality. <laughs> did you see the picture of her? Yeah, I did, lol. So ugly. <laughs> I thought it was a monkey, lol. Huh? Really? Aren't newborns all like that? No, she's clearly just ugly. <laughs> So, what's her name? Summer. Is that because she was born in the summer? You think too on the nose, don't you think? I don't think so. What about your baby? Ava. Isn't it a pretty name? Yeah. Oh yeah. When mine is born, do you want to go to baby massage class together? It's supposed to be very good for the baby. Hmm... My baby seems to have bad skin, so I'll pass. Are you sure? I thought it'd be great to go together. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, Ava. I heard you got an A-plus on your test. Congrats. Thanks, Summer. That's amazing. And you got into that beauty pageant, right? You heard already? Well, my mom decided to enter me. Really? You're so pretty, so it's only natural you got in. No, I just got lucky. I don't really care about the pageant or becoming a model later. I prefer learning with my tutor. Do you like studying, Summer? Hmm, I guess I'm not so smart. Mom's talked about getting me a tutor, but I don't want to, well... <laughs> You've been getting lessons from a tutor for a long time, right? You're so smart, Ava. And you're learning lots of other things, too, right? Yeah, I guess. Ballet on Monday, swimming on Wednesday, piano on Thursday, tutor on Tuesday and Friday, cooking and folk dancing at the weekend. Really? Do you even have any time off? I have to study five hours minimum after getting home, too. So I'm always lacking sleep. I don't dislike studying, but I wish I had a bit more free time. You're pretty busy. Oh, but piano was cancelled this week. So I've got nothing to do on Thursday. Why don't you come over, Summer? 
We can study together. If you need help with anything, I can help you. Is it okay? Oh, but we're studying? You don't want to? <laughs> but if you memorize everything you've learned in elementary so far, it'll be a big help. I guess you're right. Hmm. Okay, I'll go. It's been a while since we met, Ava. See you Thursday! Hi, Ava. Have you got a minute? Hello! What's up, Aunt Molly? The other day, Summer went to visit your house, right? Summer seems a little quiet since then. Did something happen? Hmm... I'm not sure. I see. I'm sorry to suddenly ask. Anyway, thank you. Is Summer okay? She seems kind of gloomy, and she's not eating much. Normally, she's constantly playing outside. But she is unusually calm. She was the same as normal when she came over. Okay. I wonder what happened. Oh, yeah. Aunt Molly, have you got a bit more time? There's something I want to ask you. Pearl, can we talk? There's something I want to ask you. Oh, Molly, it's been a while. It's unusual for you to get in touch with me. I guess so. It looks like our kids keep in touch a lot. But it's been quite a while for us. It's because you're kind of hard to talk to these days, Pearl. What? Did you text me just to tell me that? I'm sorry, but I've got an appointment with Ava's beauty pageant organizers. So, can you keep this brief? Summer visited your house the other day, didn't she? She's been acting strange since that day. You don't happen to know anything, do you, Pearl? No, I don't know. I see. I thought she seemed less cheery, so I thought maybe something happened. Oh, really? Maybe she learned her place? It didn't seem like she knew it before. Her place? I had a little chat with Summer. She's not fit to be around Ava, so I told her she should stop spending time with her. What? You said that? To a child? It's exactly because she is a child. You have to make sure they understand these things from an early age. What are you talking about? It's true, isn't it? My Ava gets excellent grades and is beautiful. I don't want her to get any bad influences from being around mediocre people. Summer isn't exactly that great when it comes to her smarts or her looks. <laughs> Lol. How can you say something so horrible? That cheerful girl has stopped talking. Do you realize how much you hurt Summer? <laughs> I just told her the truth. Looks like her mother didn't know either. Isn't it better if your daughter gets plastic surgery? She'll look even worse next to my Ava otherwise. What? I can't believe you'd say something so disgusting. You're the worst, Mom. Huh? I don't ever remember ever giving birth to you, Molly. <laughs> Lol. It's me. Ava. I'm right beside Aunt Molly now. I saw the whole conversation. <laughs> nice try. But that's an easily disprovable lie. <laughs> Lol. Not very creative of you. She's swimming now, so she can be at your house as well. If you think it's a lie, why don't you call the swimming school? But maybe you won't need to. It's probably around time that the coach will notice I'm missing and call you. I am a star student after all. Huh? Is this true? Yeah. I was worried about Summer, so I came to visit. Worried? Why? Aunt Molly got in touch with me. She said that Summer was acting strange since she got home. But she was the same as normal when she was with me. So I wondered if you did something to her, Mom. You're always trying to fight with Aunt Molly. And talk bad about Summer. I'm honestly embarrassed by your behavior, Mom. What? Mom. You always put down other kids when you compliment me. If you're going to compliment me, you should just compliment me. Why do you always say bad things about Aunt Molly and Summer? I'm embarrassed to have you as a mother. 
I love Aunt Molly and Summer. You're my pride and joy, Ava. What's wrong with bragging about your amazing daughter? You're strange, Mom. I'm always so busy that I don't have time to play with friends. I've even collapsed once from lack of sleep because you made me study five hours every day. You only give me salads so I can maintain my weight. I don't think normal moms treat their daughters this way. I've been tolerating this for so long, but not anymore. Ava, what's gotten into you? Since when did you start saying such things? I've always said I don't want to do all this. But you didn't listen. So that's why I gave up and stopped talking about it. But I'm not going to do as you say anymore. I'm so angry at you for hurting Summer. What do you plan to do about it? Aunt Molly is telling Dad to come over here. She's telling him everything that you've done. He'll believe us if he sees all the texts between you and Aunt Molly. I'll ask Dad and get him to divorce you. What are you talking about? Why would he divorce me? He will. He's always been against your strictness in the beauty pageant, Mom. You guys always argued about that. But in the end, you always cry and weep until we give up. That's how you always got your own way. Dad doesn't realize your potential. My potential? That's just an idea you pushed onto me. Dad said to me before, if your controlling behavior became too much, to let him know. He said he'll oppose you to protect me. Dad cares about me much more than you do. That's not true. No one cares more about you than I do, Ava. If you really care about me, then you'll get out of my life. Bye. Wait. Ava! Listen to me. I have given my all to raise you. You're just going to abandon me? Ava just went upstairs. Molly! What the hell did you say to Ava to turn her against me? I didn't do anything. Ava decided to do this herself. Are you trying to steal my daughter? I hate you. You've always been like this. Why do you hate me so much? We were so friendly with each other before we had our kids. Did I do something wrong? Yes, you did. What exactly? Tell me. You were always trying to outdo me at family gatherings. Wearing your designer clothes. Trying to show off your leisurely stay-at-home mom status. Looking always happy, like you didn't have a care in the world. What? I have to work part-time even after getting married. But why do you get such an easy life? You're uglier than me, but you're so much more privileged. Isn't it unfair? Is that what you thought of me? Then I realized what it was. Your life is on easy mode because you went to a good college. Because that's the only good thing about you. Even if you felt that way about me, our daughters had nothing to do with it. It doesn't excuse the horrible things you said to Summer. Excuse me? The fact that she's your daughter is excuse enough. Your child is like an extension of you. When I saw your child for the first time, I knew I could beat you for once. I realized that Ava would help me do better than you. She's so pretty and smart. Of course she'll have a better life than you. Really? That's why I thought of everything to raise Ava perfectly. Food, education, clothing, toys. I didn't spare any expense and went for every edge I could. But your brother thought we should raise our child in a warm environment. It was ridiculous. You need to go all out from the beginning when raising children. I told him not to get in the way of my perfect plan. What do you think he said in response? What was it? He said to look to you for a good example of parenting. He told me that you took a very freedom-based approach to parenting. He said that my parenting was just putting strain on the child and the family. That's when I decided... I'll raise Ava to be the perfect child, better than your daughter. I vowed to prove that my parenting is better than yours. So you pushed your own ideal image of a child onto Ava. I'm sorry if my brother's words hurt you. I don't think I can say whether my parenting or yours is better. But your child isn't your property. 
Shut up! Don't you lecture me! Who do you think you are? It's clear from what happened today. You didn't prove that your parenting is the best. All you did was prove that your parenting didn't help anyone. Stop it! Don't say that! I worked so hard! But why do you have to say it like that? I think you should live apart from your daughter and reflect on your actions. Forget being a mother. You're missing something that makes you human. You're trying to say that you're perfect. I don't have much confidence as a parent. It might look to you like I don't have a care in the world. But back when we met, I was struggling with my infertility. It's not as if I wanted to tell you this. But I just want you to know that not everything is as it seems on the surface. What is this? You're so condescending. What should I do? If Ava leaves me, I'll have nothing. It's all your fault. Don't take Ava and my husband away from me. Your child doesn't exist to validate you. She's not your tool, nor is she an extension of you. Because you can't understand this, your family is going to get away from you. No, I don't accept this. I don't want to lose them. Stop comparing yourself to someone else. I don't want to say this, but... You're not fit to be around your own daughter. Hey, Mom! I'm going to the library with Ava tomorrow. Oh? Is Ava okay already? Yeah, she seemed sad at first. But she said she'll suffer if she doesn't get away from Aunt Pearl. I see. And how are you doing, Summer? I'm sorry you got dragged into your mom's problems. I'm doing good already. Ava has been crying and apologizing to me since yesterday. She says she's sorry for the bad things her mom said to me. She'll keep apologizing as long as I'm feeling down, right? So I decided to stop feeling down. And I want to be the one to support Ava from now on. You're strong, Summer. Ava is very kind too. I'm proud of you both. I know. Ava's great. I really like her. She's my precious friend. After that, my brother dragged Pearl to us and made her apologize to me in summer. My brother and Pearl discussed things at length and decided to divorce. Pearl insisted on getting custody of Ava throughout the court proceedings. But Pearl's strict parenting was considered abuse by the courts. Ava's father got full custody. But Pearl still didn't want to give up on getting Ava. She tried to kidnap Ava when she was alone. Ava asked passers-by for help, so she managed to get away. A restraining order was put on Pearl. Pearl went back to live with her parents. I hear that she was pretty seriously depressed, so she's undergoing therapy now. I'm disappointed that she never realized the error of her ways and that she didn't start genuinely caring about Ava and my brother. But by being separated from her mother, Ava got the freedom that she wanted. Ava decided to switch to the same junior high school as Summer instead of the prestigious private one that her mom chose for her. She's always liked studying, so now she's more excited than ever to learn from her tutor. Summer and Ava are loving their school life. Summer might be a little bit too easygoing, but I'm sure she'll be fine as long as she's got Ava.